Well, good evening. Uh, it's my privilege to be with you tonight and to share the word that God has placed on my heart. Last week, I was asked by the coordinator for the Sunday evening Vespers service at the village to fill in for the preacher who uh, had to cancel this past weekend. The coordinator attends worship here at Trinity, and he said, given my upcoming return to the Navy as a chaplain, I would make an acceptable substitute preacher for their Memorial Day service. Um, now, I completely understand why he arrived at such a conclusion and really appreciated that he thought of me, but I confess the idea uh, gave me some pause. Uh, with the rise of a nationalism in our country and even in the American church that is inconsistent uh, with the values in which our nation was founded, I felt some tension uh, with the idea of focusing attention in worship on a civic holiday, uh, even one as reverent and honorable as Memorial Day. But as I studied and prayed about what God would have me say, I grew more comfortable with the idea. And in the process, um, I found myself even more excited about serving God and country, uh, about again wearing the cloth of my nation while also wearing the cloth of my faith tradition. So it's been an interesting week, uh, to say the least, and seeing that Memorial Day was only the day before yesterday, I felt led to share some of these thoughts with all of you. Uh, I invite you first, though, to, to please pray with me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us this evening, so that in the reading of the scripture your word is heard, in the meditations of our hearts your word is known, and in the faithfulness of our lives your word is shown. Amen. And hear now these words from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, uh, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of God for the people of God, and God's people respond, thanks be to God. Across our country on Monday, we Americans observed Memorial Day, a day set apart to remember more than 1,300,000 men and women who have died serving our country during times of armed conflict and war. 250,000 flags, American flags, were placed on the graves of Arlington National Cemetery. Now, decorating graves is the oldest of Memorial Day traditions. In fact, the holiday was originally called Decoration Day and honored the soldiers who died during the Civil War. Flowers were placed on graves every year on May 30th. And then after World War I, the holiday expanded to include soldiers who died in any war and is now observed on the last Monday in May. So on Monday, I remembered and honored the only family member I am aware of who was killed in action during a time of war. My great uncle, Sergeant Francis J. Waldschmidt, lovingly called Frotz by my grandmother, was a tail gunner with the 350th Bomb Squadron 100th Bomb Group and was flying with the crew of a B-17 bomber they named Party Tonight. And I sure would have loved being able to ask him about that, uh, but their plane was shot down in northern France on September 3, 1944. As you all know, military service is a part of my heritage. I have a few family members who served in the Air Force, 
but my father and I both proudly call ourselves submariners who served in the world's greatest navy. My father served more than 29 years, and I served more than eight. And as you also know, I am so grateful that God has called me and granted me the privilege of returning to naval service later this summer to represent the United Methodist Church as a commissioned officer in the Navy Chaplain Corps. During the tradi traditional services on Sunday, specifically during the Sacrament of Holy Communion, Alice led us in singing Eternal Father, Strong to Save, a hymn appropriate for Trinity Sunday with its strong Trinitarian lyrics, as well as Memorial Day, because it happens to be the official Navy hymn. And I was deeply moved as we sang these words from the fourth stanza. O Trinity of love and power, all travelers guard in danger's hour. From rock and tempest, fire and foe, protect them wheresoever they go. In some ways, I believe there is a connection in these words to the work I feel called to do as a Navy chaplain, this idea of protection. The courageous men and women of the Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard and their families sacrifice much to defend our freedom, and they all deserve much in return, not the least of which is nurture, counsel, and support to help guard their spiritual well-being as they faithfully serve our country. So it will be my greatest honor uh, for me to serve God and again serve my country by being a member of the Navy Chaplain Corps and carrying out just such a mission. And wartime or not, hardship and suffering is always a part of the equation of military service not the least of which stems from extended deployments and separation from loved ones and all that is held dear. So it is critically important then that there be a process that helps people move from suffering to hope. And thankfully, such a process exists not only for our military and their families, but also for us. In his letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul encourages us to boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. From suffering to hope, a process more than fitting to remember on days like Memorial Day. A process that frankly is needed as we continue to reflect on the war in Afghanistan, the longest in our country's history, terrorist attacks that still happen all over the world, even the innumerable horrific school shootings we regularly see in the news. There is certainly enough happening in our world around us that some days it feels like a process for moving from suffering to hope is needed now more than ever. I'm sure you've heard about the story of suffering and hope from which the movie Flag of Our Fathers was made. Alan Wood wanted to honor the sacrifices made by his brothers on Iwo Jima during World War II. For five weeks in 1945, American forces fought to capture this volcanic island from the Japanese. And in the process, about 6,800 U.S. troops died. Wood's ship was beached close to the base of Mount Suribachi, a rocky 500-foot peak on Iwo Jima. After heavy fighting, armed forces managed to scale the peak and hoist a flag, but the flag was too small. A dusty, dirty, and tired Marine boarded Wood's ship, asking for the biggest flag available. He needed something that could be seen to give hope to the men still suffering through the invasion. Wood produced a 37-square-foot flag that he had discovered months earlier in a Pearl Harbor Navy depot. That flag was put on a length of water pipe and raised by five Marines and a Navy corpsman on the peak of Mount Suribachi. 
Photographer Joe Rosenthal took the iconic picture that we've all seen, a frozen flash of history that won the 1945 Pulitzer Prize. He didn't talk much about it, reports Wood's son. He didn't draw attention to himself. He was just there when someone needed a flag, and he gave it to them. At the end of the war, Wood said that he was humbled by the fact that there were men among us who were able to face a situation like Iwo Jima, where human life was so cheap. From suffering to hope. Alan Wood endured fierce fighting and then returned home to live and work, a longtime surviving member of what has been called, for very good reason, the greatest generation. I recently read a somewhat similar story about suffering and hope in a group of Marines who were part of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Navy Chaplain Kerry Cash wrote a book called A Table in the Presence about his experience as the Navy Chaplain assigned to 1st Battalion, 5th Marine Regiment, the first troops to invade Baghdad in April 2003. And just prior to the invasion, Captain Will Dickens and Corporals Hardy, Beavers, and Batke were parked in their Humvee, riding out a terrible sandstorm with 50 to 60 mile per hour winds that lasted for several hours. They passed the time listening to the convoy radio and taking turns reading Corporal Hardy's green pocket Bible by a red lens flashlight. At one point during the night, Corporal Hardy had to get out of the vehicle and having forgotten that it was laying in his lap, the Bible fell out and was lost in the sand. As Chaplain Cash wrote, the Bible's presence had comforted all of them during the first week of the war. They knew there would be more fighting in the days ahead. For some reason, it had always been a relief, and dare I say, symbol of hope, to see it sitting there on the radio mount, silently offering its reassuring words. And now it was gone. Needless to say, Dickens and the others could easily have located another Bible. I carried hundreds of pocket New Testaments in the back of my vehicle for that very reason. But this one had been for them our Bible. It had accompanied them ever since they'd crossed the breach. And for those who go to war, such symbols, which are cherished through frightening circumstances, take on an almost sacramental power. Now, there's quite a bit more about that Bible in the book. By what they consider a miracle, the Bible was found the next day on the side of the road miles from where it had fallen out of the truck. Completely inexplicable. And what's more, just a few days later, those Marines credit that Bible on their radio mount with helping all four of them survive a direct hit from a rocket on their Humvee during what was the bloodiest battle of the Iraq War. Talk about suffering and hope. The Apostle Paul wanted to give hope to Christians who were suffering when he reminded the Romans that since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are justified by faith, made right with God by our faith in Jesus. And the result of this justification is that we have a peace with God that goes far deeper than anything the world offers. Paul reminds us that Jesus is Lord above all, through all, and in all, and that the peace of Christ is part of this heavenly empire that is grounded in the grace and love of God. Through Jesus, we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, writes Paul, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. The word boast. Now that can be a bit problematic for some because boasting carries a negative connotation. Alan Wood never boasted about providing the flag to the Marines at Iwo Jima. And we probably would have thought less highly of him if he did. Hey, I did that, you know. 
But the original Greek word is rendered in other translations as rejoice, which carries a more positive spin on this celebration of sharing the glory of God. We rejoice in our hope of sharing the glory of God. Paul's jubilant spirit carries over to the next verse where he says that we also rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Paul rejoices in the progression from suffering to endurance to character, to hope. He celebrates it in his own life and challenges us to do the same. Memorial Day was a time to remember suffering, but not to see it as an end in itself. Instead, suffering is often the beginning of a process that produces endurance, character, and ultimately hope. Paul says that we're able to get through tough times because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And this love enables us to endure the pain and injustice that is so often a part of life. As we endure, we develop the moral and ethical qualities that become known as character. And as we refine these qualities, we discover a deeper reservoir of hope in God. Now that was certainly the case for the Marines of the Fighting Fifth. One of the most inspiring things I read was that throughout their six weeks in the Kuwaiti desert, 49 Marines from that regiment were baptized by Chaplain Cash to become new Christians. In six weeks, 49 Marines accepted faith in Christ. Now, in my mind, that stands as proof that suffering, hardship, has this curious way of moving us closer to the God who is our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Now, this is not because suffering is ever good, but because it's an experience we share with Jesus. We are reminded that suffering is a part of God's own experience, especially in the cruelty that was inflicted on Jesus in his trial and crucifixion. He felt the kind of physical and mental agony that is often reserved for war zones, but he endured it and moved from the suffering of death to the eternal hope of resurrection. Suffering is a part of every human experience. And because we live in a violent world, as much as we would like it to be different, we can never realistically expect otherwise. Memorial Day reminded us of the men and women who have died for our country, but also of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. We remember their deaths with gratitude for the many ways they continue to move us from suffering to hope. And to that I say, thanks be to God.